Rocks go. Go. LD. LD is go. MD. MD is go. LD, verify go to initiate terminal count. LC, you are go to initiate terminal count. Copy. Houston, you are go for TLI. Over. Hey, so welcome back. And I wanted to start out with a quick run through of some of the different mods I use in my career save. Um, on the screen here, you kind of see my game data folder. These are everything that I use within my save. Um, there's a lot of mods, so it's not necessarily for the lower end computer, but a lot of these don't impact performance too much. Uh, it's just when you get a lot of mods going together at the same time, you can create some instability. Uh, the biggest ones I use really are cryo tanks, which is how you get those nice golden shiny foil tanks. Um, they carry LH2 and it adds boil off to the game. All the mods in the near future pack, so that's the near future electrical, construction, solar, so all of those are really cool and they add a lot to the game I think. The one I use a lot is Blue Dog Design Bureau, which has tons of historical rocket parts, so things from Skylab, the Gemini program, Mercury, and all the way through Apollo and beyond. I really like those for launch vehicles. And then on the spacecraft side, the stock-like station pack is really, really great um, overall. It just like, all the parts are wonderful looking and the rotating rings really add some extra stuff that I think the base game is missing. So where we're picking up is a crew rescue mission. So there was a stranded astronaut around Minmus and I needed to go deliver a few people to the station and surface base. So I sent over a Gemini capsule with one pilot. I did an exchange with a stranded astronaut and then I brought that capsule back home. Following that, I had a contract to add to my space station around Minmus. This is my gateway station, which if you're a fan of The Expanse, you'll dig the name. It's Tycho Station. So Tycho has limited habitation right now, and it really isn't where I need it to be. So it's gonna need a lot more docking ports and a lot more comm connectivity. So this was part of a second contract to add another space station around Minmus, and I took it as an opportunity to deploy it, and then once I got the contract, add it to Tyco to expand it a little further. It also would build up the monopropellant stores and some of the electric charge storage. On top of that, it was my first attempt at reusing and returning a Atlas Common Core booster which in the end didn't work out. Uh, it got all the way to the water and exploded. Then it came time for my first interplanetary mission. So this was a mission to Moho. I decided to go there because why not? I never really send anything there, so I wanted to kind of use it as an opportunity to send a spacecraft by. Um, this was just a quick flyby. Uh, it did low and high science, so I was able to zip in, grab science on the way in, transmit it, and then grab some on the way out and transmit that as well. Um, it's a really cool planet, honestly, especially with some of the visual mods where you can see some of the particles coming off the front of the planet um, as it's being just absolutely blasted by the sun there. Uh, the spacecraft still has the transfer engine because it was just way too efficient. Following that, I had an update to the Cortez outpost, which is what I called my surface base on Minmus. I had a contract to expand the base. Uh, that included adding to the crew quarters and an observation deck and a new science lab. So all of this is kind of redundant based on what it already has, but the contract was a big payout, so I wanted to send things up as best as I could. With Atlas being our launch vehicle here, I sent each module up and sent it down to the surface and landed it. Sadly, I don't have any of the great footage of landing this nice inflatable module. Um, it was a real pain to get uh, situated right there and connected to the base. Um, it's kind of a, a challenge to spot land and scoot things around on the surface using little bursts of monopropellant and judicious use of the quick save button. But all in all, I got things attached. Another Atlas going up and this would include the lab and monopropellant expansion module. So this, I landed right next to the base 
and then I scooted it into position using the old dock line there. Next up, the observation deck. Uh, this just had to have a cupola on it, so I used three in the end, and you guessed it, it's on another Atlas V. My launch capability in this save is really constrained by that 140 ton limit, but I tried again for a booster recovery with a few extra parachutes, and it ended up being successful. The cupola unit ended up coming in way over on propellant, so I ended up dropping the stage next to the station, and maybe one day we'll be able to pick that up. But it's a pretty cool addition. Uh, it adds three-way views out the uh, side of things. Next up, an additional add-on to Tyco Station. This would add a docking adapter and a fuel storage. Um, this was a contract to actually expand the station directly, so then I could take the other module I launched earlier and mount that on as well. I tried for another booster recovery here, and we were successful there too. This station module had a bunch of liquid fuel on board, a fair amount of monopropellant, and it would greatly expand the electrical power production of the station. I docked this on really, really thin margins. Um, it was very close to running out of propellant to where the last little kick into the station was the one that allowed it to connect up and dock. Aesthetically, this is kind of my favorite part of the station's buildup. Um, it's really symmetrical. It just looks really crisp and clean and while it's gonna get more advanced, it looks so good right there. Uh, finally, I sent up a prospector. So this is a ion propulsion powered uh, scan sat. So this would go up and scan the surface for uh, elements that we can mine and use in situ resource on. This is all part of building up that whole in situ architecture where we're trying to send infrastructure to be able to build up our capabilities. So again, in this save, I'm trying to make every single mission build on the next. And even if the contracts aren't directly related, we can build things that have longer term use and can build up that infrastructure for the future. Um, that drops the cost of future missions. So we're always kind of future leaning. And again, this is basically the, the philosophy of the Artemis program right now and to the moon is intended to basically stay there and then build up on itself. So every landing module, every hab module, you're not gonna send to a new location, you're gonna send to the same area and you're gonna build up the infrastructure in that area. Um, all of these contracts also go to fund uh, bigger objectives like the interplanetary mission I had been building up to. Several LH2 tankers were flown up using Atlas and docked with the interplanetary transfer vehicle. Um, these took many, many, many launches to be able to fill up, again, with that 140 ton limit. It's very hard to get enough mass up to the station. And sometimes the spacecraft would just randomly explode for no apparent reason. So that was a real great thing to have happen, and quick saves were necessary the entire time. The crew launched separate to the orbiting transfer vehicle. Um, they would board it and then travel to Duna to do orbital ops, gather science, transfer to the moon, and then come back to Kerbin eventually. Um, this is kind of similar to the concept that Lockheed has laid out for the Mars base camp, where an orbiting spacecraft basically ferries you from the Earth to Mars orbit to meet but we're not far enough to have that second station around Duna just yet, but we will, we'll get there. So because I believe in having great margins, I left one of the tankers connected to the orbiting vehicle and I had the Orion and its uh, propulsion stage dock up and grab a little bit of extra LH2 for the road. Docking on here was relatively easy. There were no uh, hijinks from the Kraken or anything like that. And at this point, the vehicle is completely ready to go. Um, the crew is loaded at the last minute. Uh, that's similar to how in the Constellation program, things would have been done where a spacecraft is assembled in orbit, 
months to years ahead of time of the actual mission. When it's finally time to go, the crew is launched separately and boards things. This keeps any long-term crew stay time down, and it means that if you have to refuel anything, do any maintenance, or do any work, you can do it ahead of time without having to worry about those crew. So that's how I'm trying to run my program here, where I don't fly crew unless they have adequate resources to keep them going. So with the crew on board, it's time to burn hard and escape Kerbin and get on our way to our first crewed interplanetary mission. And because I'm starting to run low on time here, I'll leave you with this nice shot of the vehicle moving away, and I'll see you in the next episode when we arrive. Um, there's a lot more video you'll probably notice in this episode, because this is kind of the turning point where I started to figure out maybe I could make this into a pretty cool series, and I recorded a lot more video on the side while I was playing. And there's a lot more expansion that's going to happen on that orbiting station and that surface base. But yeah, that's where we're at, episode two. There's a lot more to come. It's kind of a slow burn to get up to things, but there's a lot of missions in between, and I tried not to fool around with showing any of the Maneuver Node stuff or Rendezvous stuff that isn't too interesting because everybody does that, and I'm trying to get things out a little faster, and I have to catch up to where I am now in this actual save. So I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.